and this is Ebony Jones from UrbanSwirl.com. I'm here with reality TV personality Safari. Hi, Safari. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you, Ebony? Oh, great, great. It's a great pleasure to be able to talk to you this, after, this afternoon and have a great group of questions to ask you. But first up, everyone really knows you from Flavor of Love when you first, your first uh, reality TV show appearance. How did you get picked for that show? Um, it was crazy. It was like I was on a computer at home, and I had went on Craigslist.org, and it had a, a like a, um, what is it, a little uh, ad on there, and it said, would you like to date a rapper? So I'm like, okay, right? <laughs> and I emailed them back, like, a picture and stuff, and so then they called me in to um, come and, like, do an interview. So I went in, and I did, like, an interview and everything, and they liked my personality, and I was like, okay, so we want you on the show, and blah, blah, blah. And that's how I ended up getting on Flavor of Love, too. Oh, that's cool. And how was your experience <laughs> on the set, especially after the camera stopped rolling with all the other girls? On Flavor of Love 2, um, basically after the camera stopped rolling, I was gone because I had a little altercation on that show. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like after the camera was off, I was out of here. Yeah. So I didn't really get to meet the girls on um, Flavor of Love 2. I didn't get to really meet the girls till the reunion show, which happened like a few months later. And that's when I first came in contact with really like the rest of the girls. And how did that reunion go for you, especially afterwards? Um, the reunion show went well. It was, I mean, it was real chaotic <laughs> or what have you. You know, it was a big, I don't know if you saw it, but it was like a big commotion. A lot of the girls were upset with um, a couple of the cast members or whatever, so it was like a big chaos thing going on there. But for me, it was cool. Okay. Did you ever get, you weren't on that particular show too long because of the incident, but did you get to meet Flav, and how was he on the set? Yeah, um, I got to meet Flav um, on that same um, show. I met him before we went into the house. You know, so Flav was, like, really cool and everything like that. And then I met Flav at the beginning of the show, and he was cool. So Flav is a good guy. He's a really good guy. Oh, okay. And you next went on from that show to Charm School, and you won. How was that experience? How did it feel to, to win out over all those other contestants? I was happy because it was a check. You know, instead of winning love, you won money. So it was even better. <laughs> it was better than being on Flavor of Love because you got to win money. So I, I, it was, the experience was good. The, everything was good. I love that show. Even the challenges that were sometimes kind of hard, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a good thing to be able to overcome your fears and your different things that you think you couldn't do and be able to do it. So, right. you know, Are you still in touch with any of the girls from either the Flavor Love or the Charm School? Um, yeah, I stay in contact with, like, Delicious and Buck Wild. I've been in contact with both of them, but that's pretty much it far as the um, girls from the show. Except for I've, I've spoken with Monique since the show, so that's oh. cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any plans to pop up on her talk show? You're just going to have to watch and see. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've been on a couple, of, quite a few reality TV shows. You've been on Brave of Love, Charm School, I Love Money. What do you like about the reality TV show genre? Um, I think it's it's a good thing for some people. You know what I'm saying? Because it gives you a chance to ex be exposed if that's what you want to do. It gives you a chance to, like like for example, I think the reality genre is good because it's it's people like to watch. Reality. People like to see what's going on in other people's lives. People like to say, oh, okay, this person, this happened to this person, and that happened to me too, so, but it's okay. You know what I'm saying? When you watch shows on TV and everything's scripted, basically it, it's fantasy. So you could say, oh, dang, why isn't my mother like 
this mother from the Cosby show. <laughs> well, your mama's not like that. <laughs> she's not going to be like that. When well, you see somebody on a reality show, you say, well, tell me, that do remind me of my mama, and that reminds me of my sister right there, too. So it makes your world okay. It makes the person, the viewer's world okay to say, hey, this happens to these people, this happens to me, I'm okay, I'm not abnormal or nothing like that. So when you just watch shows that are like the Cosby show or like, you know, some shows where, you know, everybody's like happy all the time and people just talk out their problems and then by 30 minutes later everybody's, everything's solved, <laughs> it, that's, that's, not, that's not really what happens. Well, in reality and stuff like people don't necessarily talk about their problems, and it might not be solved in 30 minutes, you know? Right. So that, I think that's the good thing about reality. Right. And now I have to ask you, as you are a veteran of reality TV shows, you have to tell us, are all or some parts of the show scripted just a little bit? Um, I'll tell you the parts that are quote-unquote scripted are like when you see there's a challenge, like with all of my and you have to do these different challenges like, you know, swinging on tires or, you know, screaming or, you know, whatever, compete, the competition part, that's scripted because the production says, okay, well, we're going to have the uh, cast and they're going to have to do this in order to win. And when they win, then you're, you know, eliminated or, you know, not eliminated, but you won't be eliminated or what have you. That part is scripted because they come up with that. The thing is the, there's no script of what may happen. It's all reacting on how something was going to happen. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It's like, say, for instance, if I say, Ebony, I want you to go out here and row this boat across the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> well, that part is written. <laughs> you know, so now you know you got to go row this boat. But who knew that a whale was going to be out there <laughs> in the ocean? <laughs> it's going to make you tip over. You're going to go, you're going to react. So however you react to the situation, that's what is captured, and that is what makes it real. Oh, so they just set up the situation. So because I know a lot of people think that they pit people yeah. against each other to kind of ramp up the drama, but that's not what happens. What happens? Well, I'm not going to say that, that people aren't pit against each other because if you're doing a challenge, you might get put against each other. They know that you guys don't like each other. You, they've been seeing you guys get each other eyes all throughout the you know, throughout the show. <laughs> they've been seeing y'all argue. So yeah, maybe they go, hmm, they're gonna be good to see these. But what happens is if they set up the situation, they can't make you react. You get what I'm saying? The situation is there, but how are you gonna react to it? So it's really just a snippet of people's true personalities coming out in those situations that they've put together. Exactly. It's, it's, it's people, just like you never, you ever heard the thing and people say, oh, that's how they act when they get rich. Saying that's how you act when the cameras come on. The same <laughs> It's the same scenario. They act just how they would act, you know. It's that person. The only thing is, like, editing, when the show, cause you had hundreds of hours of footage of them filming, because you're filmed from the time you wake up, to the time you wake back up, because it's just like 24 hours a day you're being filmed. So there's hundreds of hours of footage, and they edit it down to a few minutes. Now, with all that That's filming, on. all the time of them in the house with you, all the time, do you ever lose track of that the camera's there, or are you always aware that you're being, being filmed? You will forget the cameras are there. You'll forget. I did. I, I, I will forget the cameras are there, even though you know the cameras are there, but it becomes secondary because you're used to them being there, so you forget the cameras are there, mm. you know? And now with all this experience with reality TV, are you looking to do get into another reality TV show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, some, <laughs> there's some things in the work, so you, you'll definitely see me on your TV again. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, since yeah. you won on Charm School, you branched out into, like, a few business ventures. Tell us about your hair product, um, Safari's Ultimate Indian Hair. Um, Safari's Ultimate Indian Hair is the best Indian hair that you can do. It's soft, supple. <laughs> it lasts you for a long time, basically. Um, 
what I'm doing with my hair right now is I find some like a manufacturer. So we're going to be making wigs. So I'm going to slowly be making wigs. Um, not just for people that have alopecia and cancer, but for everybody, whoever wants, you know, hair just to look good, you know, be fly, to be that girl, you know. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing with the hair right now. And the hairline, is that going to be available just online, or are you going to also distribute it through stores? It will be um, online and also in stores. Okay. It will be online and also in stores. Okay. And another venture that you're starting is your own line of lip balm called Lip Chap. What's the story behind that? Lip Chap came about, I've always been one, um, to always be putting lip balm on my lips all the time. And when I had the altercation with the girl on Flavor Love 2, I offered her some Lip Chap. And people just started calling me Lip Chap. They thought it was funny. And I'm like, okay, yeah, well, we've been calling Lip Chap since the beginning of time. <laughs> it was like I, I saw out there in the actual part of the world where Lip Balm is sold. They don't have anything like what I've come up with, you know, a variety of flavors that actually moisturizes your lips. You have SPF 15, you know, so it's a good, good, good product. Um, basically, that will be in stores, too. We have a deal that we're working out now. Hopefully, we'll have it in uh, the major stores coming very soon. Okay. And now, last part. Tell everybody out in the audience there where they can see you next and what you have off and on and popping in your life right now. Okay. Well... You can see me on your TV coming really, really soon, so keep looking for that. You can also catch me in the new Sister to Sister magazine. It's on stands right now. I'm on a cover. Hi. Or cover. <laughs> anyway, I'm on a cover. You can see me there. And, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a beautiful thing. The rest of 2010 and 2011, look out, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to see a lot of society. Also, um, catch me on my Twitter. Twitter.com, Safari. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Safari, for this interview. This, is, again, is Ebony Jones from UrbanSwirl.com. And thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Much luck in all your um, endeavors.